What it is, YouTube? How you feeling? I'm in my house. Got sent home from work because it is snowing. Came down hard in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, Charlotte, North Carolina is nowhere near as bad as up north. I'm actually from the north, not going to specify where, but I'm from the north. It's just that Charlotte doesn't have its no snow trucks. Anytime it snows like this, that, you know, the city gets shut down for two, three, four inches. Well, that's because we got to wait for uh, Winston-Salem Raleigh to send their snow trucks down here so we can actually salt the streets so people don't go crashing and sliding all over the place. Anyways, today I was taking a good look at something I was reading. It was something regarding Nintendo. I remember what it was. It was Angry Joe. Angry Joe. He put out his list for the top 10 worst games of 2017 yesterday. And just looked at a bunch of things they had out. And I happened to notice that there was two titles for Nintendo. Yeah, the Switch had two titles. One of them being one, two Switch. The other one being, I guess, Room in the Night Sky or something. I don't know what it is. I, I just heard a passing mention of how bad the game was. That's besides the point. When I saw it, I was thinking about uh, the game you see before you, Sonic, you know, Sonic Mania. And the fact that Sega really fell off where uh, uh, Nintendo still exists, still thriving. Not just, you know, it, they're beyond thriving. They went from two years of being third in the console market to being first by a large margin in, you know, 2017. And uh, 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 it's forecast that they're going to be first going into 2018, maybe even 2019. But to get back to my point, I was thinking about again, you know, why is it that Sega fell and then Nintendo still thriving? But more beyond that is how come it took somebody who Technically an amateur, I don't call Christian Whitehead an amateur, but technically an amateur has more skill to make a competent Sonic game than Sonic Team. It's a property that Sonic Team has been dealing with for a long time. Um, it doesn't, it just, it just baffles me. At least it did until I started really thinking about it kind of carefully, you know? So, what... I think the difference between Christian Whitehead, let me re let me say his name correctly, Christian Whitehead, there we go, and the Sonic team is that Christian Whitehead actually understands what made Sonic good. I don't think the Sonic team actually understands what made Sonic good anymore. I think what they ended up doing, which also killed, um, you know, all their first party titles and killed Sonic as a console manufacturer in general is that Sega, they, when it came to, for those that know, those that are of age, the, the Sega does with Nintendo campaign, that really helped push the Sega console, but it wasn't just that by itself. When you look at it, and you look at it in detail, not only did Sega come out with a great campaign slogan, but they came out with quite a few games. The one of the most notable of them being you know, Sonic, of course. But Sonic was not only a platformer like, you know, the Super Mario uh, franchise. It was not just a platformer. It was a platformer that a lot of it revolved around a level of speed. That's not just to say, you know, it was actually speed. Because if you go back and look at Sonic 1, you look at it real carefully. It was not really a speedy game in reality. It was actually a slower paced game. It just kind of pushed you to want to go towards speed at times. Especially with the, you know, the whole, uh, the spin maneuver. Sonic 2, however, capitalized that and did so much better than Sonic 1. And Sonic 2 was definitely about speed. And, you know, I think the best game before Sonic Mania up to that point or uh, yeah, before Sonic Mania, the best game before Sonic Mania for the Sonic series was the Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3. I I, I really put all of them in the same category because you know for those of us that had the Sonic um or the Sega games or the Sonic games and the Sega attachments for what was it, the Sonic and Knuckles with the Sonic 3 cartridges and Sonic 2 cartridges, you switch out the cartridges and you had Sonic playing 
in uh, Sonic and Knuckles, you had the Sonic 3 going beyond just the end of the game over to Sonic and Knuckles, and you had Knuckles playing in Sonic 2. It was a great feeling. It was amazing. It added something to the series. But then after a certain point, when it came to Sonic, instead of being inventive, especially when the 3D era came out, especially for those of us who remember how horrible that was, in the 3D era, Sega stopped trying to be... They stopped understanding their character and all they kept trying to do was mimic uh, 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 Nintendo and what they were doing with the Super Mario franchise, which it did not work at all. For those who remember the first Sonic 3D games, whew, Bubsy didn't have far to reach <laughs> in order to be comparable to Sonic. It did not have that far to reach at all. But then even as they started to understand 3D, you know, technology more. Then we started getting games like Sonic 06. And I don't have to say much more than that. While Nintendo, they took chances with their properties, but not their first party properties. Well, unless you want to count Star Fox Zero, which nobody wants me to talk about that ever. But Nint Nintendo decided to take chances with certain mechanics and certain ideas on a few properties here and there. There were two properties that Nintendo refused to take chances on unless they knew there were sure bet chances. Those of being um, the Super Mario franchise and the Zelda franchise. Now I know what you're gonna say, you know, they took chances, especially with that Philip CDI. Oh yeah, they learned their lesson really quick, really quick. You, I'd be hard pressed for you to name me a, a bunch of Nintendo games that have Mario on the title that they have screwed up with as much as Sega screwed up with Sonic. You, I'm sure you can name a few, but then you tell me how many Sonic games have had as much flops as the Mario franchise, Super Mario franchise. You, you might, you can still probably name a few, but it's the, the disproportion is very, very large. Christian Whitehead, I think what his team understood is what made Sonic Sonic games good. But, to be very honest, Sonic Mania, in reality, is not that good. Don't, before you get your pitchfork, your pitchforks and your, your fire ready to, you know, burn me at the stake. I think it's more along the lines of we haven't had a good Sonic in so long that, you know, an older modeled Sonic was better than everything else that we were getting. You know, look at it at, uh, to be very honest, if you really want to look at it, look at uh, the DS series for the new Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers. A lot of people thought that was, you know, a great objective, but then others thought that it was really a piss poor attempt by Nintendo. Because all it was, it was kind of a rehash of, you know, Super Mario 1 and Super Mario 3 in reality. It kind of was, just in a, you know, 3D style, a newer, up-to-date style. But there were so many bad Sonic games that it feels great, where there were so many good Mario games that it felt like a poor attempt. Christian Whitehead understand what was, what was missing, what was needed, how Sonic really should work, especially with what Sega gave him. Now, I do believe that there could be an open-world 3D Sonic game. Again, put your pitchforks and your fire down. I'll explain. There is a balance between speed and quality is not the word I want to use. I guess technology would be the best, but when you're trying to do, when you're trying to show speed, especially for a Sonic game, you need to have, you need to have speed, but running forward is such a chore that you have to improve on the depth of field. I give credit for it, and I know some people still gonna get mad from it. If you haven't got mad at everything, and if you're still here, surprisingly, as obviously, well, actually, if you even found this video, that's even more surprising than anything else. But when you look at it, Saints Row 4, as horrible as it was by some people's opinions, they did the entire speed thing pretty well. When you're talking about moving fast, I could see a Sonic game going in the same vein. In terms of speed, you got to have an open, a open world. But as far as attacking opponents, the whole lock-on mechanic 
really, really, really sucks. It feels like an on-rail shooter almost because you just lock on and hit opponents. In order to get the real feel of speed that Sonic deserves, it always works better as a side scroller. But that whole 3D, you know, side scroller thing for the re most recent Sonic, was Sonic All Stars, whatever it was, it's it, it was horrible. It, it did not fit because you just it, it it felt gimmicky. The whole game just felt gimmicky in itself. But when you take an open world, let Sonic run and do what he needs to do, it might not feel that bad, especially if you're talking about boss battles. There's pl been plenty of games that's done the 3D boss battle thing correctly. I mean, we, 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 there's no need to go down the list. I'm sure everybody on the internet can name 10 and, and we still probably wouldn't hit all of them that did the, the boss battles very, uh, really well. But when you take into consideration what Sonic is requiring in terms of speed, side scrollers work best for speed for Sonic. Open world could work really well in terms of combat. But the Sonic team hasn't exactly figured out the balance and the nuance to make it work. Once they do, I think then we'll see the leap that they should have had 15 years ago. And to be honest, if they give Christian Whitehead, I'm pretty sure Sega's going to, more freedom to do what he wants... I'm hoping Christian Whitehead won't drop the ball because there's been some other attempts at Sonic games by fans that have turned out pretty poor. But I think Christian Whitehead has proved he understands what makes Sonic Sonic and what makes a video game a video game. And hopefully we'll finally get a 3D Sonic that we've been waiting 20 years for. That's enough of my ranting. Go outside and play. Me, I'm not going anywhere now. Outside, I'm about having myself some cocoa. Wait for my wife to finish cooking. And my daughters probably want to get into video games, so I'm going to have to leave anyways. Well, for the rest of YouTube, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Keep gaming.